Hey there, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and yeah, this week wound up kind of slow, and a little weird, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So remember how I said last week that things were looking to pick up for 2024, at least compared to previous years? Yeah, I think we might have to put a damper on that, at least for this week, which was relatively uneventful. Not that I'm complaining. But it also looks like it might be the case for next week as well. Yeah, Ariana Grande is going to have some tangible impact, and we're probably going to get a 21 Savage album bomb, but it's not guaranteed, and to be charitable, early numbers suggest that success might be kind of scattershot, or at least slower to move until the year picks up. And nowhere does that feel more apparent than in our top 10, where for another week, Lovin' On Me by Jack Harlow held onto the number one. And it will almost certainly be competitive for that top spot against Ariana Grande next week, especially as it's dominant on streaming and still has radio momentum. This might come down to the margins. What will likely not be competitive is Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift, currently at number two. The streams are down, the radio is peaked, I can see this getting rotated out relatively quick especially given that we're in the middle of goddamn winter. Then we got Greedy by Tate McRae at number three, which was also down on streams and had a weirdly unstable radio progression where I'd say it would open up a door for I Remember Everything by Zach Bryan featuring Casey Musgraves at number four, given how stable its streaming is, but that would also involve it getting any larger radio traction at all, and I'm sorry, that's just not happening. It did overtake Paint the Town Red by Doja Cat at number five, who, again, unstable radio week as the streams were falling back, but that might also be the story for Snooze by SZA holding at number 6. Then we got Water by Tyla at number 7, which is really trying to make a run for the top radio spot, but just does not have enough streaming to make much of a push or an impact. But now we got our first new arrival in the top 10, and one that I am frankly shocked has done as well as it has, Lose Control by Teddy Swims at number 8. I mean, it's got good sales and streaming, and while the radio is lagging, which you would expect for a relative no-name, it's probably got more traction than you would otherwise predict, this might become a minor thing for a bit. Hell, it overtook Agora Hills by Doja Cat up to number 9, which is trying to make a radio run and seems at least somewhat stable on streaming. And Last Night by Morgan Wallen at number 10, which actually saw a sharp drop on streaming as the radio keeps trying to dump this quickly. I mean, at this point, good riddance. And that, of course, leads naturally to our losers and our dropouts. And honestly, we don't have that many of either group. For the dropouts, Dial Drunk by Noah Khan and Post Malone, it hit its recurrence, it's off the charts. Might also be true for Kiona by Carol G and Pesa Pluma. And for our losers, yeah, again, not a lot here either. I'm certainly not going to complain much that Mind on You by George Burge fell back to 73, or Can't Have Mine by Dylan Scott went to 95 off the return, and Romp la Dump by Pesa Pluma, Junior H, and Oscar Maiden skidding down to 94 off the debut. That's not surprising either. I will say I'm a little bit depressed that You're Losing Me by Taylor Swift just cannot get anything going at 84, but what's for effectively a bonus track, it's not really surprising either, especially one as low key as that is. Now for our returns and gains, well again, also kind of uneven. In the former group, we got a couple older country songs getting a little bit of a boost, like Where It Ends by Bailey Zimmerman at 99, and Mama's House by Thomas Rhett featuring Morgan Wallen back at 88, as well as Sabor Frieza by Fuerza Regida nabbing another week at 97. Joy. But the gains are a little bit more interesting. Starting off with the debut with Murder on the Dance Floor by Sophie Ellis Dexter getting a huge boost to 58 off the debut from last week. I guess guess it's getting more viral momentum than I expected. That's nifty. What doesn't surprise me is La Diabla by Javi with still more momentum up to 22, and Feather by Sabrina Carpenter close behind at 46. And finally, the returns are picking up some traction really are a mixed bag, let's be real. I like Mm-hmm by Big S The Plug up to 65, but if it's coming along with E. Loro by Junior H at 79, and My Eyes by Travis Scott at 82, not exactly thrilled here, but from there we only have four new arrivals this week. So let's get this started with number 100, I Don't Give a Fuck by T Grizzly, Mariah the Scientist, and Chris Brown. Okay, 
Okay, the last time I talked about T Grizzly was back in 2017 with First Day Out, and since then he's got a following, but it's never really had that same charting crossover until now, where I gotta imagine the Chris Brown cosign is doing a lot of work. And... Yeah, this is a bit of a weird one. T Grizzly and Chris Brown, they play exes that want their girl back, and Mariah the Scientist plays the girl who already has a new partner, is seeing these guys cheat on their partners for her, and she just completely blows them off in both the hook and her verse. It's actually a little bit startling how much she is defiantly not interested in either of these hookups. Well, okay, one of them would be with Chris Brown, I don't blame her, but there's actually very little ambiguity or teasing, and I don't know how how anyone outside of Mariah the Scientist comes off all that well. Now granted, I think the production is pretty okay with the somber pianos, the guitar flourishes, and some pretty well-balanced trap percussion, but that only highlights how douchey these two guys appear. Props to Mariah the Scientist getting her first proper charting hit on the Hot 100. I will take more of her, please. And nobody else here. Let's move on. Number 98, When It Comes To You by Friday. When it comes to you. Put my pride aside, give it all to you Put my pride aside, nah so since I started seeing Friday's name on some featuring credits, especially around Lil Baby, I have been anticipating his solo crossover, with this being a song from his 2023 album, and, well, aside from being reminded a lot of Kid Cudi with his vocal timbre and production and overdubs and hell, Kid Cudi might have some chart impact next week, I actually thought this was pretty good. The guitars and trap percussion are well balanced, the choral backing behind the hook gives an otherwise pretty spare song some real swell, and the content has some weight in recognizing that he initially fell too hard for this girl, but wasn't able to open up effectively, and now he's desperately hoping she will give him a chance for him to actually do so. It feels like a bit of a last-ditch effort, and I don't love how he's trying to convince her to now open her mind for a clearer view. Feels like he's trying to flip the script on her or use some of her own lines. But as a whole, it's a good little song. I like it. Take that for what it's worth. Number 89, Cole by Dylan Gossett. Oh, Love is tough, but loneliness is twice as hard. I'll carry that bell everywhere I go. And they say pressure makes diamonds. How the hell am I still cold? I've said before how it can be kind of a little revealing when an indie country act shows up on the charts without making a ton of buzz in the indie country scene. So enter Dylan Gossett, who already seems backed by Big Loud and Mercury Republic with his EP from last year, with this self-produced acoustic song seeing some real viral traction. And you know what? This might be a sign that all those folks trying to rip off Zach Bryan might struggle a little bit, because when it's just you and the acoustic guitar, even if you have a pretty good voice, the songwriting is going to face higher scrutiny, and man, this one struck a sour note. To my initial surprise, Cole, it's not referenced because of any Appalachian connection. It's a comparison to how sometimes pressure makes diamonds, but he's just Cole, where he's trying to get clean and sober and face a little bit good luck out there, but the world is just not going his way, to the point where he doesn't even see much of a point in God or the devil if they're interested. And then you realize that all this is rooted in him getting dumped because he wasn't sober, and the bridge is a plea for this girl to come back now that he somewhat is. And look, I get wanting the relationship. I'm single right now. Being on your own can absolutely suck. But I really don't like how he frames his misfortune with this relationship, as if going through tough times entitles him to it, as if the unkempt misery of sobriety means that he's put in all the work and feels kind of petulant and there's no reward for him. And I get why this sentiment might be relatable on some level. I get why this has an audience. But it's not exactly healthy nor conducive to the relationship that he wants. And when there's no self-awareness to indicate that, and when the song is otherwise so stripped down you can't ignore it either, I think that's kind of a problem. So yeah, this might surprise some people, but I get why it might work, but I don't care for it at all. Next. And finally, number 77, Act 2, Date at 8 by 4 Bats. Not gonna lie, I had no idea who Four Bats was before this. As of now, he's a singer out of Dallas. It looks like he's got precisely three songs. Seems to be unsigned, and yet's caught some viral traction with this that runs for less than two minutes with a couple very big cosigns. And 
Honestly, I don't hear it. His voice feels very boyish and underwhelming against the softer guitar and the cheaper percussion. And while the mix is generally smooth outside of that chopped and screwed outro, which again, Texas, not surprising, there's nothing really worth noting in the content. He's buying this girl a bunch of things, taking her on a date, apparently while she's already in a relationship with someone else. And the entire song just feels kind of token, as if this is what has to happen for him to get a date at all, where it's not even implied there's any connection or closeness or if they're even going to have sex. It feels like a draft built to go viral on TikTok, but at its most underwhelming. I'm probably going to forget this exists in record time, just saying. And that's our week. Bit of a weird one, not gonna lie, but the best and worst follow very quickly, with Friday getting the top spot for When It Comes To You, and Dylan Gossett getting the worst of the week for Cole. I know, some folks might be very surprised, that seems like it would be up my alley, but it just hit a really bad note for me. Next week is probably gonna be busier, although I can't guarantee it, stay tuned. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Balls, and I'll see you next time.